Hello there. Have you ever thought about the difference between savings and investment? What is it, savings and what is an investment? Do they amount to the same thing? Do they give the same rewards? Here is me talking about 10 advantages of investments over savings. Welcome to Straight Talk with Dr. Ide, where I talk about wealth creation and financial discipline. I am Dr. Olaide Junior. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Why don't you subscribe right now and hit that notification bell so you get notifications every time I post new videos. Now straight to this chase. Number one, higher potential returns. You have more returns with an investment than savings. Now, what's the difference between savings and investment? When you save your money, you're just piling it up, piling it up. The money is not having any extra value. You know, if you're not wise, if you keep saving money without the thoughts of investing that money, some useless need will come pick that money from you. Let me give you an example. Now, you keep saving money, there's no target. There is no need for an investment. You're not just thinking of an investment. You're just saving because you've developed that frugality. It's good to be frugal, but when you don't know what to do with your frugality, that money you are saving will not save you. Imagine just amounting money without any thought of making the money multiply. An investment is a money tree. An investment is something that you put money into with a guarantee of returns. There is no return with savings, but there are plenty of returns, a lot of returns, higher returns with the investments. Ensure you understand what an investment is. An investment is you putting money into a very profitable venture and a promise of returns. Imagine you put money in a business or an investment at its worth, probably 100,000 naira, and in six months, you no longer have 100,000, you have about 130,000. You had an increment in returns of 30,000 naira. Believe me, that is what an investment is. This video is not to talk about what investments are, the different types we have. We'll talk about that later in some other video. We'll have the high risk investments and low risk investments. Today, just to talk about the advantages investments have over savings. It's good to save, but don't just depend on savings alone. You save to build cash, to have enough to invest with, to ensure a fantastic future. Number two, beats inflation. Imagine you were saving money in Nigeria for the past five years. Inflation will catch up with that money if you keep saving the money in the bank. But if you've invested in a profitable venture, a profitable venture, you are sure and guaranteed of beating that inflation. Now, do you know what the inflation rate in Nigeria is? It is very overwhelming. Compare what 2 million naira could buy five years ago to what 2 million naira can buy now in 20. 24. It is really annoying. That's what inflation is. So for you to beat inflation, you have to invest. If you had invested 2 million naira 2005, at least 10% per annum, you beat the inflation 2024. Minimum 10% per annum. Imagine that. So investment is better. It is wise to invest your money. You will always beat inflation. Whenever you're saving money, think about inflation. Think about what my money is, what now. Let me give you an example now. Imagine you bought a car in 20, let's say 2020, and you bought that car at a rate of 5 million naira. And now you're thinking that same car you have is worth about, let's say, 15 million naira now. And you say, don't worry, I bought the car 5 million naira, but I can sell the car for 10 million. That is really foolish. To you, you think you have more money, but you don't. What your 10 million could buy then? Your 10 million can buy now. So you want to ask yourself, what is the current value of that currency? So currency itself will lose value because of inflation. So think of inflation, be wise. Number three, compound growth. Have you heard of compound interest? It keeps increasing, increasing, not arithmetically, but geometrically, exponentially. The returns are mind-blowing. When you think about investments, think about things that would ever grow. Think about culture. You could decide to save your grains and eat them, you and your family, but you will exhaust your grains. But think about this way. Set a particular portion aside for eating and another portion for sowing, I mean, to grow those seeds. You plant them in the soil. You have some to eat and you've planted some. The ones you've planted will not stay in the ground. They will sprout and yield more. 
That is what an investment should do. So think about compounding. Just understand that when you're talking about compounding, you're thinking of a long-term effect. You're thinking about your future. You're not talking about immediate gratification. Compounding. I will talk more about compounding in the coming weeks. Number four, diversification. You can go into diversification with investment, but you can't diversify your savings. How do you want to diversify your savings? You save from here, you save from here, you save from here. There's no return. Whatever you put in and what you're getting out, it's just like our job. I'm eating some cuts there. Your savings will not grow. It's just an arithmetic growth. Imagine you've been saving, let's say, you've been saving 50,000 naira every day for the past 20 years, and you have like different bank accounts, saving them. Uh, inflation is catching up with each of those your savings. But imagine diversifying your investments. You have various investments. You probably have probably school, bathing salons, a chain of car washes, a chain of barbecue spots. These are investments that will guarantee you returns. Or you diversify into shares, different kinds of funds. You put money in different things. You put money in probably real estate, all kinds of investments. You can diversify. You know, you're just talking money away. You're sending money like your foot soldiers, sending them on errands, different errands. And when they go to war, they come back with captives. Captives that will make your bank account fatter, not just saving and keeping your soldiers bored. When you save money aimlessly without any form of investment or sort of investment in the future, what you're doing is you're just making your money bored and it will leave you. <laughs> Number five, passive income. Another advantage investments have over savings. You can grow wealth passively. You know, you've already started that investment and the money is growing without your physical input. But savings needs your input. You can automatically save, right? But it still involves your input. You still have to save from probably your income, one particular income. But when you invest, you could start something, grow it so large, and start to diversify. And watch it grow. While you're sleeping, money is coming in. Money is trooping in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Invest. You cannot save those investments you're making. But you can't end passively from savings. Fine, you can argue with me, but dog, why not? I can also automate my savings. Automating your savings still comes from your inputs, from your salary, from your income and all that. But when you diversify, in fact, money is just growing without you. Even while you're sleeping, money is coming in. Number six, tax benefits. You can't be taxed on investments. Now, if you're investing, you will get tax holidays. Your government sees that you're actually generating money for the economy and you're also employing people. You're building the you're building the GDP of your nation. Of course, you are entitled to certain tax holidays because you have investments. But if you keep saving, saving, saving in the bank, saving aimlessly, you are not safe from taxation. Double taxation, if I might add. Number seven, financial growth. Investments can help you reach your financial goals early as opposed to savings. Now imagine you have just one stream of income and you earn a salary from that income. You keep saving aggressively. Let's say you earn um, 500,000 Naira per month and you save 50,000 Naira or let's say you save 100,000 Naira and you want to build a house worth a 100 million. How many years will it take you to save your salary to build that dream house of 100 million? You most likely will not get that. Or probably when you're old, gray, walking in a wheelchair, God forbid, but you know what I mean. But when you have an investment, and you put your energy into it for the first two, three, four years, the investment starts to grow. It is not an arithmetic growth. It is not just growing like 50,000 Naira or 100,000 Naira per month. It's the possibility that endless investments, it starts to grow. Your other investments are growing. You have multiple streams of income. You can't predict how much you can make. The 100 million goal can be achieved in four years as opposed to 30 or 40 years with just your mere saving of your salary. See what I mean? Number eight, market participation. Your investment is involved in the growth of your economy. Your savings are not. Your savings are affected by policies. That the government brings a policy that either reduces or increases the rate of interest you get from your savings account and that will affect you negatively. Our savings are largely dependent on government policies, but your investments are not. Your investments can grow regardless of 
to the policies your government brings out. In fact, when your government brings out policies, when prices go up, you're not really affected because you increase your prices too. Everything is pushed down to the end user. So investments are far better than just mere savings. Don't just hold cash aimlessly. You've been saving cash for the past 10 years. Saving will not make you enjoy the best of your life. Because you have to put in all you have or put in a particular amount all to do with your life. The essence of savings is for you to save, to invest. That's what we do. Not just saving aimlessly. You don't save to buy a car. That is one of the most stupid things to do. Permit me my apologies if I sound harsh. But when you save money to buy a car, are you going to continue saving to maintain that car? You rather save to build an investment. Money trees. So when your money tree starts to grow, you have more than enough to settle and feed your diverse liabilities. Number nine, liquidity options. When it comes to investments, you can liquidate your investments at will. There are certain investments that you liquidate and it won't affect your overall life. But your savings, every time you plug into your savings, it affects you. You're either starting from ground zero or you're retrogressing. So I would always advise that you invest rather than saving aimlessly. Save to invest. Investment should always be at the back of your mind. Number 10, wealth building. I can't overemphasize this. Savings will never make you wealthy. Investment will. If you save aimlessly, you've just tortured yourself for the better part of your life. When you now get older, you want to enjoy your money, but by then you don't have the strength. You most likely don't have the help. But when you invest, you are growing alongside your money. You have the guarantee of growing wealth, of growing wealthy. Savings cannot stand the test of time, but investments will. Regardless of your economy, investments are foolproof. You're foolproof against poverty. So I would always advise that you invest as opposed to just saving endlessly. Savings are not bad, but when you start to save without the understanding of an investment, that is unwise. I'd like to appreciate all my subscribers. God bless you. Thumbs up. I really love what you're doing. It keeps encouraging me to do a lot more content. Yes, Dr. Olaide saying thank you. God bless you. If you just found this video interesting, I would have you like, share, post your comments, and don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Till we meet again, same time, same place next week. Don't forget, health is wealth. Bye.